Welcome to episode 27 of Created by Design. Today I have my sister Donna James with us. She's going to give us an update on the bed runner that she's been working on for a little while now. Mm -hmm. And you probably will be working on it for a while. Uh, a few episodes back, actually probably last year sometime, she did an episode with us where she, you, gave mm -hmm. us um, kind of how she got it started, how she's putting the hexagons together for this bed runner. And we're going to do a refresher on that, but now how she's expanded it and uh, getting her ideas where she gets her creative ideas, some of the stitch work, and now she's incorporated uh, a journal that she's going to be expanding. So you have a lot of information to share with us mm -hmm. today. So I'm going to tip the camera down and we'll show you what we're talking about. Oh, okay. So Donna, show us what you're actually ultimately making. What's uh, the net net, the end outcome of all your creativity here? Well, I'm making a bed runner and this is the first part of it. And this will be filled in with a half of the hexagon with the fabric so it's like I cut one of these in half. Right. And then I will do a crochet edge all the way around the okay. outside. So when you say bed runner, this is to go across the bottom? The foot of the bed. Okay, uh -huh. across. Uh -huh. So you think it's going to be five feet in length? I don't know for sure. It's going to have about 120 of these hexagons in it. So are you making it for a queen size bed or a single? No, probably a single bed. Okay, okay. Yeah. Just so we have a... Yeah. And yeah. so it's probably going to be... I think it's eight of these across. Okay. And I forget how many down. Okay. So I just have to tell everybody, each one of these hexagons is different. You've got lace in here, you've got crochet doilies, you've got fancy stitch work, you've got pearls just in this little section alone. And so she's going to tell us, first of all, how she gets the hexagon. Let's start at the base, the, the canvas on, on what you're working on. So I cut the hexagons out of fabric. And each uh, hexagon takes two pieces, and they the back is got the batting in it, and it's just ironed over. The top is a hexagon that's been folded over, and I have inserted a piece of linen or some other uh, light fabric in the center. And that is my canvas then for doing so whatever that I do. So this is the face part. So, so this is what the back side of what she uh, has put together. So it has a fun look from the back side right. and a, really a modern look on the back side and then a very, very antique, and, traditional look on the top yes. side. And the back fabric has some significance to the sentimentality of the okay. hexagons because when we took a cruise here a few years ago, I bought this fabric in Scotland. Okay. And so it was a whole uh, a charm pack or a layer cake is the terminology mm -hmm. that they use in quilting for buying a stack of coordinated fabric. Okay. And so that's what all of this was in one pack. Pack, okay. And so. That's pretty cool. That's for the back. Okay, so you've got your base canvas, and then where do you go from here in, from the, the pieces that from here, then what's your next process of how you decide? Well, the next process is figuring out what I'm gonna put in here. Okay. And so I have used several books. This one has a lot of ideas in it for stitching. And here's some hexagons that are similar okay. to what I've done. Then I also have used this book and I get more stitching out of this book. Um, different uh, stitches and techniques in here that I incorporate in these you can see around here or 
uh, on this one I did some external stitching. Okay. And so So before you actually started making this, you made yourself a purse. Yes. That was I did. your first inspiration. I did. Uh, and the purse is like this, and it is out of this So these book. are hexagons here? Yes. Okay. And these hexagons were actually um, started out with scalloped edges, and they were folded over okay. to make the hexagon. And so then I did all of the hand stitching and embroidery in so the many different of these. little fun stitches you've got. And in here. so this kind of then put me into doing this. Uh, okay. And so I will also crochet these Irish roses to go in each one of these joins. So this this Irish rose right here, and that just finishes it off really neat to, to do that in the center. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of little Irish roses. It is. So here you have a piece of lace. Here you have embroidery work. This is machine embroidery. Okay. And this was a freestanding piece that I attached to okay. this. Okay. And this is actual lace that mm -hmm. you've sewn on. Here you've done uh, totally your own embroidery fancy right. stitch and then this is the piece that has a little doily right. and you've got another piece there to show us. This piece is one that I'm working on. I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do in here yet. So I play with pieces of lace and buttons and things like that to figure out what it is that I want to okay. put in here. Okay. So this is a definite work in progress. And these nice little clips just really help you keep all of keep that up, folded edges together. together. Right. And here is one that I have done the background in. I've actually stitched the uh, fold over down, okay. but I still, I wasn't real happy with it like this. Okay. It seemed to be kind of plain to me. So I pinned this on, and I haven't finally concluded that that's exactly what I'm going to do. So you really get to I play may, with it a lot. I do. Yeah. I do. I play with it quite a bit. And so then this is one that I'm ready to stitch together. However, I still will want to put a trim okay. around here that seems to kind of finish, finish it off, it off. Okay. and I will need to do that to this piece okay. too. So in here, just talk about it a little bit, you've got some strand of little um, pearl Pearls. and be and just buttons. Mm -hmm. and some ribbon. I mean, it's amazing. And this is a piece of antique lace over okay. here okay. from our grandmother. All and kinds of bits and pieces. And you that that piece is also the same as this piece. Okay. And here, this that I cross. And so I just really play with it. This is one that I crocheted the center for. This is a piece of fabric that I just frayed oh, the edges. Frayed. Okay. And then I... I, it still seemed to be too plain mm -hmm. for me, and so I put this little bow on it, and then I stitched this oh, around okay. the outside, oh, that's neat. and that kind of finished it off mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that is uh, ready now, and I don't know that you can see this, but I've marked along here okay. where I'm going to do a blanket stitch that I have to, so I have a base to crochet into. Wow, and you have a template, uh, you maybe didn't bring it yes. today, but you've made a template that shows, so you yes. can make this marking. Okay. Similar to this. Right, right. That I can put right in here, and then it, this doesn't give the marking for out, out here. Mm -hmm. This, this does. And I know exactly how many marks I have to have there. I have to have 12. Okay. Plus one in the corner. And so that is essential to making have these fit. uniform. Okay. And making then, and I've written out in my journal exactly what I, how I crochet that so that if I lay this aside for a <laughs> while and come back to it, 
my memory isn't always as good <laughs> to remember exactly right, what I've done. Right. So I've done that. I've also done some trial uh, how I want to stitch around the outside. And so I've done that. Here's the Irish rose pattern in it. This was an idea that I put in here okay. as a possible trim on the outside. I don't know yet. Well, we'll get back to her journal here in just a minute because that's another whole project oh, that's yeah. developing out of this. But as I'm looking at this, I'm just thinking of how this can be used. It's not having to make a full big quilt, but what a memory, uh, you know, place to store memories um, with uh, your grand in our case grandparents yeah. and things you've collected from trips but what a great way to uh, Im more immemorabilize it what's that mm -hmm. word memo <laughs> I don't know she either. Can't say it either. Memorialize, Memorialize. it. Memorialize yeah. it. And so this is one of the things that I am going to put in these hexagons. This is my grandmother's parts of her wedding dress. And she actually wrote this out on a piece of paper and gave this to me. And so I have a piece of her lace. I'm actually going to print this on a piece of fabric put it in the center of one of the hexagons. And then here is uh, what she has done on the edge of her hem. The stitching. The okay. stitching that she's done. And so I I'm gonna will- I'm going to hold that up because this is really so delicate. And uh, maybe you can see you can some of that see stitching. The stitching that she's done. What a treasure to have. And so when you scan this and it, you'll do this on your big uh, embroider machine. No, no, I probably will just put the, uh, not embroider it. It'll just be printed on a piece of fabric. Okay, okay. And so that that will be in in the center. One of these squares yes. or, or hexagons will be there. What a treasure. And so a lot of the lace is from this same grandmother. Our Grandma and Halda. Yes. And so that's what, kind of what has driven uh, okay. me to do this is I had all these pieces of lace and mm -hmm. what was I going to do with mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. besides... Uh, Keep them tucked away. <laughs> yeah. And this way they will be enjoyed and I'm sure that then this will be passed down sure. for generations. And then the journal that I create will have each one of these hexagons represented in it. Okay. And I will, and I've already started printing some of them. I've so you this is a photo in, or scanned it. Uh -huh, okay. In my printer, mm -hmm. and then I will uh, write about each one of these. Okay. And so that's what's going to be in the journal. So it will have more meaning than just a visual. Right. Look at that it. is great. And so. Your, let's talk about your journal for a minute then. So this journal that you've already started will be inside of yes, a bigger journal. Yes, it will be inside of. And so I have written out what I do, how, how, what the measurements are. I'm quilting each one of these because just in these dots so that the center stays okay. attached okay. instead of puffing out. So I don't know if people can see that, but there's yeah. just a little knot. about an inch apart or thereabouts. Yeah. And, and it's just enough to hold it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so I will do that to each one. And so as I make changes or I do something mm -hmm. different that I want to remember, I will put that in here. So I most of this, excuse me just a second, most of this is all hand sewing. All of it is okay. hand sewing. Okay, so this is something you can be sitting in an evening and yes. working on a hexagon. You don't have to be sitting at the sewing no, machine kind no. of thing. So I it's relaxing yeah, for you. I don't sit at the sewing machine at all right, for any right. of this. This is really cool. So it's you're into it a year already. About... 
a year, yeah. not quite okay. a year, almost. But you could be into it for another year. Oh, yeah, <laughs> at least. <laughs> but it's it's just such a great memory piece. I think it's terrific. And um, I suppose one of the things, this, you want to make sure you have enough of this same thread. To, I do. To do the whole do. thing. That would be one. And that it it is a common DMC thread that I can add to, order, add to right, if right. I want to. So learning new stitches, you can always do mm -hmm. that if you want. So you're not ever going to get bored no, in doing no. doing this. And you've got so many blanks already made here. I've got here. all of the blanks made. Oh, okay. All of the blanks are done. Wow. And I've divided them into packets of 10. Okay. So I will take 10 out, work on that. When I get those all done, then I will start, start on the packet. next 10. And I've decided I'm not going to crochet them together as I go. I will crochet around the outside. Okay. But I may want to lay them out oh, differently. to arrange. Oh, that makes uh, sense. Arrange them. And right. so I did this much mm -hmm. so I could see what it looked like. Right. So I could make sure that I was using the right number of stitches mm -hmm. between them. And so I did that. And uh, then I will, I will figure out how I'm going to crochet these together so I'm not stopping and starting a lot. So you don't have a lot of little end right. uh, pieces of yarn to, to and deal with. I will, these will be crocheted in as okay. I go. Okay. So you can do that with crochet. You don't, yes. You, yeah. uh, I, whenever I can do that with the knitting, I do that mm -hmm. too so you don't have to at the end go back and sit for a mm -hmm. day and put it all together. Right. Well, the the ability to come up with new creative ideas. I mean, this would be um, so much fun because every square or hexagon is is different, mm -hmm. and so you can't make a mistake really. No. Uh, and and just how you can show off, like here she's got buttons. Well, our grandmother had a button collection, and in one of the episodes, we're going to talk more about grandma's buttons but what a what a fun way to show them off and uh, just let your creativity and imagination well and then this piece i had this fabric and this is all of this fabric oh, okay. that i had and i was playing with it trying to figure out what i was going to do and i decided that i would use this as the border mm -hmm. and so then when i got this pleated and put together in here, then I had to figure out what else what was, was I going to do with it. And I had this piece of machine embroidery that I put on here, and then what would I put in the center? And I found this button, and I don't know that the picture will pick it up, oh, it but it has a if little- If you can hold it still. It has a little face oh, on yeah. it. Oh yeah, yeah, I can and see that. And it was in my grandmother's button collection. And then I had to figure out how I was going to finish around the edge okay. to make it coordinate. Sure. And so then I saw this stitch in one of the books that I had. And so then I copied oh, that's that perfect. stitch yeah. around there. And so it ties it all together. Well, and when you first look at this, I mean, you really have to look at it for a little while to see all the different layering mm -hmm. because there's many, I mean, you got your border, you got, of course, you got the crochet out here, but then you've got the stitch work, you got the pleated work, you got the piece inside, you got the button. So, I mean, it builds mm -hmm. on itself and um, just very, very unique, very clever. And I think that's going to be uh, an enjoyment to the family. You probably have a granddaughter at this point in yes. time that has her eye on it. Um, but how fun. And I would imagine opportunity to learn new things. Oh, Learn yes. new stitches. Um, and I'll see something as I'm looking at a book and I will think, oh, I could incorporate that mm -hmm. in here. So it, it it's... Uh, uh, palette for all kinds right, of new right. ideas. To well, do. and because if you don't have a good supply of lace and that kind of thing, this is the kind of thing you can go to Goodwill mm -hmm. and buy bits and pieces of things to mm -hmm. to have a, some things to work with. Right. 
Yeah. Right. And I have many bags like this that are full of different pieces of lace. Mm -hmm. Some of it's new. This is an old piece. Oh, yeah. And uh, so various colors. And so I can incorporate those into mm -hmm. this. And I have this piece. I just had these pieces. Okay. And here's a little piece oh, for pity that sake. I had yeah. kept. And so I'm trying to figure out what am I to put in what there. I'm going to do with this, and I may abandon this at this point mm -hmm. and do something else, sure. and come back to this later. But it's kind of cool because as I look at it, this is a leaf design. So mm -hmm. the fabric that you've chosen around the mm -hmm. edge here has a leaf in it. So there, yes, there can be some coordinating. Of doesn't have mm -hmm. to be, but like in this instance, it does kind of coordinate what you're what you're doing. Uh, from here to here. Well, in this one, I coordinated the color right, with the right. outside, and so yeah, it it grows. It, it grows does. as you it work does. on it. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see this one with Grandma's wedding dress and this fabric. This I'm sure it's silk. It's silk. Is just so fine and delicate, and uh, to see what you're going to do and with that. And then we have a picture of grandmother wearing this dress. Yes, and, and I will insert so that in I here. I will incorporate that yeah. into my journal awesome. when okay. I do it. Okay, okay. Yeah, so we'll do it here on the video, but that's right. So on your journal, mm -hmm. um, that is going to be such an interesting history piece, mm -hmm. too, for the family, just to kind of keep some of those stories and your trip, because of mm -hmm. what was on the back side that represents your, your trip to And I, it's kind of England, unique because this UK. is going to give a whole different look yes, yes. to the whole uh, uh couldn't be such thing. A, more of an opposite. No, yeah. it, it's which I think is really kind of cool. Opposite. Yeah, yeah. And I, that was pretty intentional mm -hmm. to do it mm -hmm. that way. So very uh, good. It just makes a kind of an interesting. Right. So excellent. Well, thank you, Donna. Is there anything else more that you want to tell us about Not this that I can think of right now? And we can do an update later. Later on, as we get more done do you find do you kind of get to a point that you need to put this away for yes. a while and work on something yes. else and that's why i have kind of set these out in bunches of 10. Ten. Oh, that's a good idea so that i can do do it that right. way. right well and you're an organized person so when i look at where your you know crafting area is sewing area you've got everything um because you do different things but you've got everything pretty well organized so it's easy to get to and your yes. work is organized i i think one could make a big mess out of this oh, if they weren't can. organized with it so you can um, and i do have a tendency to make a big mess when i'm trying to figure out what goes in the center right because i'll lay all of these things out right i will get beads out and i'll start laying things on sure, there to see sure. what it looks like and so, unfortunately, you have to clean that mess up yeah. when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of it, isn't it? Yes. yes. Well, very good. Well, thank you for sharing this with us. And you're going to be sharing uh, about some other projects you do with some buttons mm -hmm. on another episode. Yes. So we're going to uh, transition away from this right now. And uh, we'll be getting back to you all. I've also asked my sister today to bring uh, a couple of her wall hangings that she has made. Uh, if you've been watching any of our episodes, you know she makes many wall hangings. A number of them you make, Donna, with uh, a book club. And yes. So they're yes. themed uh, wall hangings. But you've done several that are not through the book club. And these that I've asked her to bring really show off grandma's buttons. And our grandma had, I think it would be considered a very large button collection. Yes. I was going to look up some of the buttons for the age of some of them. Uh, they have to be quite old, a number of them. Yes. And we've got well, underwear buttons and shoe buttons. and Most of these buttons were probably from the 
teens, twenties, and thirties. Probably, I wondered. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. So. So on this, uh, move it down here so you can see the top border up here. Uh, this is where she has um, the top of her wall hanging. Uh, show you she's got some great big buttons on what she would where she would put the rod through to hang it with and uh, so she's chosen some of these really enormous big buttons that used to be popular years ago those big huge probably coats and and yeah, that sort they, of thing most coats had these large buttons and this particular wall hanging, we'll scoot it back up here, she's got pockets. The theme of this is, as you've named it, sewing. And tell us about what's in the pockets, how did you get your inspiration, and... Well, um, this pocket had a, just a wooden spool in it that okay. I took out. And this pocket has some tatting shuttles from our not our grandmother that collected buttons, but our other, other grandmother, grandmother that crocheted, and she also did some tatting. So this is and really a memory board. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. And so these buttons, or these tatting shuttles are in here. This has a, uh, a wooden spool of, uh, the thread has been used, but okay. it's an old uh, spool. That's in yeah, you don't here. see them made out of wood no. anymore. And then this has an uh, darning egg in it, and some people may not know what those are. <laughs> we don't but have to darn. We used socks. to darn our socks. <laughs> yes. And I started darning them by saying "darn darn" and put them in the garbage can. <laughs> We're gonna move this up a little more to these bigger pockets. And this pocket has actually a curling iron in it. And this curling iron was one that you would put in the chimney of a kerosene lamp to heat wow. it. And so that Was this our grandmother's too, do you it think? It was. In her probably things. Grandma Isla's. Okay. Uh, and then this has some button hooks in it for buttoning the shoes that used to have those rows of buttons down the side. And then this must be a little repair crochet hook that's in there. Um, so we have those. And then uh, this just has some sewing notions in it. They used to use wax all the time. And this is a place you could put your thimble. And these are some, uh, old uh, needle needle yeah. uh, oh i remember as a kid they used to come cases. like this yes. yes yes and so i just stuck these That's in perfect. here because it was kind of interesting to have those uh, and then this is designed to come off of okay. here and use it as a little sewing so kit. let's move this up so they can see the bottom of it so this border of buttons goes all the way around it's kind of yes. hard to get a good picture of it but all of these buttons in and of it just makes it so interesting to see all the many different shapes and sizes and you know mostly we're into zippers nowadays and don't see or pretty plain buttons yeah yeah you know. not the real unique fancy ones yeah so this is so fun to see this I love it so now the next um, wall hanging you have here is again all about buttons these are glass buttons Okay. On this wall hanging, and so um, I chose glass buttons from all of grandmother's button collection. But and here is you've done like of the little rosette. What do they call yes, this little? This is a uh, <laughs> wheel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can't it's think of the a, name. Uh, you've gathered up the fabric, yeah, yeah. and and so then you put a button in the center and and made little little flowers out of it. You've got hearts on here, you've got kitty cats. This is this is represents a jar of buttons because mm -hmm. we always collected buttons, buttons in, in a jar. jar. Pinwheel. Mm -hmm. And hearts with buttons really makes a very, very clever wall hanging. And these are little tiny buttons that I put at the 
on the head of the pins. And like the this little, was a pin holder, right, yeah, right. A little pin cushion. So there again, you can just let your so, imagination yeah, run. Yeah. And then we have another one here that also represents the jars of buttons. And these are each kind of different. Why don't you tell us about these the buttons? These are metal buttons that came off of work clothes, pretty much. Okay. And then this row of buttons across here are underwear buttons. Right. And some of these are made out of bone, and some of them are, uh, this is a shell. Okay. And so then this is just red buttons, and these are pretty much buttons that came off of jeans or this says big map. jackets <laughs> or overalls. Camp Busta. Yeah. yeah, Levi Strauss. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So some really um, unique, it was just uh -huh. a great way to show off these and buttons. And then the buttons that are go all the way around the outside are usual, are character buttons. So they are an item that you would recognize in most cases. There's a fish and a lamb and a key and a dog and an anchor. We have a little owl and, over here and a yeah. cluster of grapes. And so they're just all, here's a kitty cat and a clothespin. These were all buttons that she had collected and I just thought this is a nice way, nice way to, show. to show them off. So when you make a wall hanging like this, Donna, you have you start with your backing, you've sewn on the buttons, of course, by hand. Mm -hmm. This is all done on the machine. Mm -hmm. you've, you've done your mm -hmm. sewing on the machine. You've got a little bit of... Uh, Batting, batting in, in there, really uh -huh. lightweight batting. And this has been hand quilted, and I cheated on the border. This is actually a print. I didn't sew all of these. Oh, squares what a great together. idea! Yeah, well, no, and that's a great cheat. So then I uh, hand uh, hand uh, quilted okay. in between okay. each one. Okay. And button, so. button. Who's got the button? Mm -hmm. That used to be a game we all played. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. years ago. <laughs> can hardly remember how to play it but um, yeah so this is just uh, a fun way to show off if you've got buttons uh, I think people are still collecting buttons hard to find mm -hmm. some of these older oh, ones yeah. I think grandma mm -hmm. must have bought old garments and uh, just cut off the buttons yeah. off of them yeah <laughs> Who knows how she started. Well, and it used to be you cut all of the buttons off of a garment before you put it in the... Once it was worn out. Yeah. Well, or the rag before bag. Before they put it in, even before they would give it to Goodwill, it used took to be... Took the buttons off. They took the buttons off. Well, because they were, you know, we're yeah. talking at a time in the late 40s, earlier even that during the depression right and those things in became the 30s uh -huh. valuable well you go and look at the price of a button in the store now and buttons are not cheap no at they're all. not and so maybe we'll start collecting buttons again and uh, but they won't be quite as unique i don't think as no. what these are uh, just really really cool um, it, it's fun just to sit and look at them individually. Here's one that's a clothes pin. Mm -hmm. I mean, we spent hours as children looking at these yes. buttons and going through them and laying them all out on the floor and just really sorting really enjoyed yes. them. Sorting them and yeah, they were quite intriguing and still are. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted her to show you what she had done with her buttons. And I'm now in the process. I'm going to be making a video on what I'm going to do with my button collection because Grandma's button collection was so big. Uh, she divided it between mm -hmm. her two daughters and actually the daughter-in-laws. Mm -hmm. And then we as grandkids all got yes. buttons. And at a point in time, what buttons our mother had left over, we, mm -hmm. we got those buttons too. So we, we've we each had a lot of buttons to work with. And I've never done a lot with my buttons, but I'm actually developing a project to get them out of the container mm -hmm. <laughs> and show them off because I just think this is so much fun, such a conversational piece to uh for people to sit and and look at and here's one with a seahorse in it which is uh that's kind of fun to 
you know, mm -hmm. who would put a seahorse inside a little, <laughs> you know, clear plastic? Very unique. And this one has a, a skier on it. This one ha is a money bag. A money bag. I mean, there's just a, a, unbelievable what all is on these buttons. But anyhow, I'm going to get busy and actually do something hopefully creative with my buttons. And I think of grandmother every time I see these buttons. And uh, it's just fun to be able to have them and have them out where our kids uh, and grandkids and great grandkids can uh, see them and appreciate them. So uh, hopefully this is, this is inspiring. I was going to say this is a button you'll probably never see again. It's a walnut shell. Oh my goodness. Shaped like a walnut shell. Yes, it is. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And this is a, a drum major, major hat. hat. Uh -huh. Yeah. Very, very unique. So hopefully this has been inspiring to you if you've got a button collection from your grandmother. Uh, maybe you'll find something clever like this, this too. This one is a bowling pin. A bowling pin. pin. So we have to stop watching. We have to stop <laughs> looking know. because even though we've seen them and worked with them you know, for so long, I never cease to be amazed at just the creativity of the people coming up designing buttons. Mm -hmm. These would be fun buttons to design, actually, if that was your job. So anyhow, thank you again for watching us, and we will be doing more with buttons, so stay tuned for uh, more of the silliness that we actually shouldn't call it silliness, but it, it's something grandma started, and we've been very blessed. Both of our grandmothers were um, sewers, um, crocheters, knitters, uh, and they really passed that mm -hmm. on. And they were cooks. And so that, you know, we, we really have a rich heritage from mm -hmm. both of our grandparents um, passed that along and, and we've benefited from that. So this is good, great memories for us to be able to see these. And so that's why I want to get mine out so they can really be appreciated. So mm -hmm. again, thanks for watching everybody and stay tuned to see what we do next. Bye now. <laughs>